how are you able to stay in line with that as you're growing the business? So, so, so one of one of the things that that we do, and this is this is a million dollars that I'm giving you right here, Eric. <laughs> no, no, that's no. When you brought that up, it, it just like it went off in my head. Like, bam! Like, how do how do you do that? Because so, so, so our local contract here with um, uh, the uh, MT Bank Stadium, which is the home of the Baltimore Ravens, and uh, uh, Oriole Park, which is the home of the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, the majority of our team members there are hub zone residents. And then when we hire for uh, new contracts, one of the things that we try to do is we try to get college student, local college students to come on board and help out with that office, office operations. Uh, yeah. so, so a tidbit is that college students, every college, even our Ivy League colleges are considered hub zones because the students that reside there, uh, their income is below uh, the threshold uh, for, uh, you know, to be considered a low-income area. So every college is, is, is a hub zone. I did not know that. Wow. No, that was uh, – um, did you come up with that idea or, some you know, some of your team came up with that idea? With, with, with hiring the, the college interns? Right, bringing them on. Well, you know, those were, those were some of the tidbits of, of going to the hub zone. We're a member of the hub zone council, so going to the hub zone council and – and talking with other hub zones and throwing out ideas of, of how we can maintain uh, the hub zone st status and how we can help the community and uh, you know give individuals who this would be their first internship or their first job the ability to, to work in the space. Well, I think that serves a dual purpose. Then, right? It's um, you know you're you're helping them and educating them and uh, getting them prepared for their future business success or career success. And then at the same time, you know, you get uh, the benefit of maintaining uh, your size standard. Which is exactly. Uh, so actually, uh, I have, Michelle Burnett was one of my uh, past guests. Okay. Of Bone Council. Um, so it's interesting you mentioned that. Maybe that's how uh, Maria connected the two of you somehow. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Now, and, and Eric, really, really quickly, because I, I almost lost my train of thought when you were mentoring, 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 mentoring. Mentioning <laughs> about uh, a lot of companies give up. Uh, so through research, uh, you know, one thing that I found is that it's it's the fifth year. So most companies give up before their fifth year. But if if, if someone can maintain to that fifth year, that's when uh, you know they have a a a a, a, a growth uh, in their company. So I, I I tell all your listeners, please keep grinding, keep going. Um, as Reginald F. Lewis said, keep going no matter no matter what. Uh, and that fifth year is that turning point. So that fifth year is like it's like you know the, the forces open up and, and you know your your business will skyrocket. Wow! Wow! No, that's that's great purpose. When you start out, was it just you in the company, or did you have any employees? When you no, it was, it was, actually it was just me working out of, out of a spare bedroom. Um, uh, the people that I did uh, employ were 1099s at that particular time. Uh, you know, we had limited resources, so we were not able to, you know, to pay FICA and Medi Medicare taxes and all that good stuff. But we had 1099s, and, uh, you know, through that, we were able to, to, to grow revenue. We were able to, you know, bring on our first, our first full-time employee. Did you, where did you learn how to run a business from? So I, I do have my MBA from the University of Maryland University College, okay. uh, and then also it's just taking different seminars. So I have been to uh, uh, the Tuck School of Business. Uh, they're building a high perform performing uh, minority business. Uh, I did have a, a mentor, uh, uh, Brian Cunningham, that started started a business back in the '60s. He was a former uh, NASA scientist. Okay. Uh, he took his, his business public on, on Nasdaq and sold it back in '89. Uh, so I did have a, a business mentor that was able to to guide me and, and show me roles. So as well as my CPA, uh, Robert Waller, an associate, been in business for himself for about twenty years. So you know, definitely surrounding myself with with uh, people that have been there and done it. Uh, you know, this is a question that people ask me all the time because, um, again, with me and me sharing my stories and my experiences, and the same thing with you. And you may get this asked often. Is they said, oh, can I be your mentor? You know, could you be a mentor? And then, so what the question is ultimately is how do you find a mentor? Um, any words of wisdom? How did you find your mentor? 
Uh, how did you run into him? Was that a conference? Sure, 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 sure. So, so, so one thing, one thing I, I, I would say uh, to individuals that are looking for a mentor is, is really look, what would you bring to, to that relationship as well? Not just what you would get from a mentor, but what can you bring to that relationship? Why would a person want to be your mentor? You know, what, what do you offer as a mentee that will entice that person uh, to be that mentor. So for me, it was it was pretty much uh, going out and and and, and, and doing the research on uh, who Brian was, what he brought to the table, what I as a mentee would bring to the table, how our, our two uh, you know how we would mesh together as a mentor and a mentee. Well, no, it makes sense. I mean that that says it all. That says it all. Uh, is he still around today? He is. He is. Brian's an older gentleman. Okay. He's in uh, uh, early eighties, mid eighties, actually. Okay. Okay. So Brian is still going strong. Still has brilliant ideas. What does um, he think about your success? Oh man, uh, it's, he's very pleased. Uh, yeah. I'm very pleased. Isn't that rewarding? I mean, I, I know uh, someone encouraged me a long time ago to do real estate development, and I remember because uh, he was up there as well, and he started having Alzheimer's. And I talked to him. I said, "Do you remember?" When I was that little boy, you told me to do real estate development. He says, what did you do? I said, I did it. He says, all right, well, good job then. <laughs> he said, good job, sir. And, you know, so I, 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 when you told me he was older, he had sold a business in the, in the 80s, I figured as much. Um, but that's great. That's good stuff. As you were growing the business, did you take on any lines of credit or anything? Or uh, all self-funded? Well, in the beginning, it was all self-funded. Okay. You know, beginning, you know, banks are not looking <laughs> to yeah. money for small business. Yeah, you know, they're, <laughs> they're not. I've never, you know, I agree with you, man. I, you know, they told me if you give me 50000 we'll lend you 50000 no, no doubt about it. And then one of the issues, and it's still a, a, a real issue for uh, minority businesses, especially African American businesses, is, is, is access to capital. Right. And having that access to capital. Uh, so in the beginning, it was self-funded, just putting everything back into the business. As we grew, we were able to get an SBA loan. Mm -hmm. So that, that really helped us out and helped us get over the hurdle uh, winning, you know, winning larger contracts. Now, um, since you mentioned that, you you spoke at an event, Black Wealth Through Entrepreneurship. Can you tell us about it? Oh no, I wasn't. I wasn't a speaker there. I actually attended there. So that was uh, what was Robert's name? It's, it's going to cross my mind. So that was Robert Wallace. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Yeah, that was Mister Wallace. Are, are you familiar with Robert Wallace? I'm not. Okay, you would definitely want to reach out to Robert. Eric. Robert would be a phenomenal guest. Uh, he's been in the government space for a long time. Actually, he started. Uh, building a high, the uh, minority business program at, at uh, Dartmouth, uh, the Tuck School of Business, and having minority owned businesses to come there and, and get uh, insight from um, uh, from Dartmouth uh, Business School prof uh, professors of mm -hmm. how to really scale your business. Is that uh, uh, staying in line with that same conversation? Is is that you know when we talk about resources, things that um, helped you grow? Is that something you would recommend to small businesses? That particular program, that I, def I definitely would. I definitely would. The program is not cheap, and they do offer uh, financial assistance to, to individuals that qualify. So I would definitely um, tell your listeners to, to, to go reach out to the uh, to uh, to Dolphins. It's a Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth. That's correct. And then you actually go there and stay there roughly for a week. So it's, it's really, it's really an awesome program. Okay. Um, any other uh, tools or resources, books, things that you want to share that helped you uh, growth in your journey? Sure, sure. So you know, anytime that I can, I'm always, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I love, I'm an avid learner. So I'm always reading, always reading the Wall Street Journal, always reading the Washington Post, New York Times, um, the local city paper, Baltimore Sun here. Looking at fortune, just, just, just coming up, just looking at uh, different ideas. You don't want to get stuck in, in the industry that you're in because if, if you're not looking for new ideas and seeing what's coming down the pipeline, uh, you may miss some opportunities. Uh, so, you know, artificial intelligence is going to be a huge player uh, in all spaces 
and the Internet of Things is going to be a huge player in all spaces. So just look and see where you can, you know, get yourself in line, get yourself uh, uh, in line to, to, to really uh, be in the forefront of, of these trends. Mm, okay. Uh, now, the Business Growth Symposium, that was your event? That was, that was. All right, okay. All right, can you touch on that? Uh, what was the event? Sure, so, so, you know, just wanting to give back uh, to to small business community uh, here. So, so in, in the DMV, the uh, Maryland, uh, Virginia, and the District of Columbia, uh, most of the major events are held outside of the Baltimore metropolitan area. They're, they're held in the D.C. area, or Northern Virginia area, you know, where, uh, you know, federal government is located at. So, you know, we want to bring um, that type of program to, to Baltimore City. Uh, so, you know, we had Dr. Randall Pinkett, Pinkett uh, the former winner of uh, The Apprentice, was our keynote speaker, and he's a major player in the uh, in, in the uh, federal government contracting space. Yep. Uh, uh, you know, just, just giving back to, to the business community. Now, I do know his story. Um, someone mentioned to me that I heard him speak before. And so I know that he made his, he said he made all his money doing the government contracts. Not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. And yeah. Then, then one thing I would, I would definitely tell a lot of your listeners uh, about the 8A program. So we're in the process of going after our 8A, 8A certification, uh, where a lot of companies go wrong with uh, the AA certs that they get too early. Uh, so a lot of uh, companies get their AA certification very early in the game. And then, you know, it's only a nine year program. You know, you'll have five, five years pass and then you'll, you know, you hit your mark. <laughs> and then you only have like four years left in the program. So I would, I would definitely advise uh, your audience to, 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 you know, is to, to wait until you know that your company is ready to really benefit from that program.